Dear friends, in this tutorial, we are going to look at how to handle missing data in Pandas. Now, often when you are downloading data from internet or let's say getting it from any other source, it might have missing values as shown in this uh, CSV file. This file contains uh, New York City's weather data and you can see that some of these cells are not having any value in it. Also, it is missing uh, the data for 2nd and 3rd January, okay? So when you're processing this kind of information in Pandas, uh, we will see how you can deal with these missing values using uh, fill NA, interpolate, and drop NA methods. I have more tutorials uh, on how to handle missing data, but this is just a start and we are only covering these three methods, okay? So as usual, I'm going to start my Jupyter Notebook. Uh, now, if you don't know what is Jupyter Notebook, I have a separate tutorial on it, but you can also use any IDE of your choice, such as PyCharm or Notepad++, whatever you prefer. I like Jupyter Notebook because it is great with data visualization, okay? So I'm going to click on new and start a new Python Notebook. And the first thing we do, as usual, is import pandas as pd. And then I will read the CSV file that I just showed you, okay? And print the data frame. The star that you are seeing here means it was processing it. So it read uh, this uh, CSV file successfully into a data frame. Now, for the purpose of this tutorial, I want to make my day a date column. So let me show you what I mean by that. So when I, uh, when you normally read CSV like this, uh, what's it, what it's gonna do is, it's gonna read day as a string column. You can see it is a string. So whatever you're seeing here, this is nothing but, but a string. It's not an Excel file, okay? It's a CSV file. So I want to first convert that column into a date column. And for doing that, you have to use parse dates argument. And in that, you can say that parse day column as a date type, okay? And when you do that, Okay, let's first print it. You can see that it, it converted. Now, by looking at it, you cannot probably figure out the type. So what I do usually is just, so you can see that now the type is timestamp. Okay, so we're good. All right, so I got day as a daytime column. Now I want to make this uh, an, an index for my data frame. And in order to do that, you can just say df.setIndex day as your index and in place equal to true. Remember, you have to do in place equal to true. Otherwise, it's not going to modify the original data frame, but instead it will return a new data frame. Okay. And when you do that, you got day as your index. Now, if you have any values, and if you are processing this information, then you have to do spatial handling. You have to check like if value equal to NA, then do this spatial thing, okay? Often it makes sense to replace these NA values with some meaningful value or a guess, okay? So in this case, let's say I want to replace all NAN values with some other value, okay? So the first method that we are going to cover is fill na okay so what you can do is df dot fill na okay and in bracket you can pass the value that you want na to replace with okay and i'm not going to modify my original data frame but instead uh, get this back into a new data frame so, and when i run it uh, you can see that all these NN values that it had, it replaced them with zero value. 
you can see that everything is everything that was na is zero now okay uh, so this is good now uh, sometimes having zero is not probably the best guess so you want to come up with a better guess okay uh, for example here in the case of event what does zero mean right so maybe you want to f use fill na but you don't want to fill entire data frame with this value maybe you want to specify uh, different values for different columns okay so pandas supports that also so the way you do it is again i'm going to receive it in new data frame and inside fill and a method now you can pass a dictionary okay now what does this dictionary contain so dictionary contains name of the column okay now in temperature column let's say i want to replace all na values with zero and in my day uh, not day but wind speed column i want to replace it with again zero but my event i want to say no event okay and then print new data frame now as you can see here the temperature and wind speed it replaced with zero as you can see here but the event now i have no event okay so you can just use this dictionary to fill specific values for a specific column but still i'm not happy with uh, how i handle missing values here because see if you're calculating a mean or something for this temperature then mean is gonna come really horrible and if someone looks at data he will think okay on first january it was it was 32 temperature and the second january it was zero fahrenheit right some someone might think this uh, the temperature went uh, down by so much but in reality uh, we actually don't know what was the temperature and all we are trying to do is come up with some estimate okay so then the other way of getting better estimate would be just to carry forward the temperature on 1st January here okay so whatever was the temperature on the previous day you carry forward and you do it uh, in a similar way for other two data types okay so for that you can use again uh, your fill and a method okay but here what you will do is you will say method equal to forward fill forward fill you can specify by typing f fill f fill means if i have any value then just carry forward previous day's value okay so let's print that okay cool now you can see that uh, it just carry forwarded the value from the previous day. So 4th January had any value, but now it carry forwarded uh, 1st January's value here. So this looks little better than just having zero value. Okay. Same thing uh, on 9th January, I, I didn't have any event. So you look at 9th January. Now it is sunny because you carry forwarded previous day's value. You can also use backward fill, meaning carry forward next day's value. It's not really carry forward, but you're copying. Instead of copying previous day's value, you're copying next day's value. So if you do that, what's going to happen is now 4th January has a value from 5th January. So now it copied value from 5th to 4th. Okay. So you can use B fill method also now if you go to pandas documentation you can just google in pandas uh, fill na is gonna show the documentation for uh, fill na and you can see that we used backfill b fill and f fill you can also use pad or like word backfill okay so you can use all of that uh, you also have this other argument called axis 
So let's see what axis can do for us. So here, if I say uh, axis, okay, axis equal to columns. When you do axis is equal to column, what it is doing now is, let me open this CSV file here. So here, previously when we were using backfill, it was uh, copying values vertically, like it will go vertically and copy value from here to here. But now with axis equal to columns, it's copying values horizontally. So it's going row by row and copying value from previous cell. So here, look at here, it's, it was nine here, and it copied that nine into temperature. So you can see this nine is copied here, then the snow was copied here. So you can see this was snow and this is also snow now. So you can, based on what kind of data you are dealing with, you can copy it either horizontally or vertically. Okay, now if you, check the documentation of fill NA, it has another interesting uh, property or argument called limit. So let me show you what limit can do for you. So here I'm going to replace this with forward fill and just kind of show you. So when you have forward fill, uh, let's say in the case of 7 January, I had 32 and it will just copy 32 to both of these uh, missing data points, okay? Now, let's say due to some reason, I want to carry forward this value only once, okay? So I want to copy it only here, but not here. In that case, you can specify limit, and you can say, my limit is one as far as copying my valid value to missing value is concerned, okay? So when you run this, you can see that now 7 January value was 32. It copied that to 8, but 9 still has an A because my limit is 1. I can copy it only once, okay? Same thing here. 6 January wind speed was 7 miles per hour and it copied it to 7th. So you can see that 7 January now also has that value, but 8 and 9 January has an A. Okay, if you chain limit to be two, you will notice that this seven is copied here two times, right? Seven and seven, but my 9th January is still NA. Okay, so this is how you can use your limit parameter. Okay, now I'm still not happy with the guess that I'm making because if the temperature on 1st January was 32 and on 5th it was 28, it is likely that the temperature on 4th was in between, okay? I mean, it's not always guaranteed, but that's something you would consider a better guess, okay? So we have a method called interpolate in Pandas. So let me just create a new cell. And by the way, I'm using the shortcuts. You can, uh, you can uh, access all the shortcuts here. So when you say insert cell below, the shortcut is B. So that's what I'm using. So I'm here, I'm pressing B, it's creating a new cell for me, okay? So here, uh, df.interpolate, okay? So when you do df.interpolate, uh, it's gonna interpolate the values. So if you look at your new data from here, you will notice that now for the 4th January, it came up with a better guess, uh, which is a linear interpolation. So if you have studied linear interpolation, uh, you basically, you will come up with this value 30, okay? So it was 30 to 28 and you're gradually transitioning uh, and, and having this intermediate data point, okay? So this is probably a better guess okay and it, it did the same thing for these two cells also you can see that 32 34 and here is 32.66 33.33 so it's somehow coming up with this uh it was 33.33 so it's using interpolation uh linear interpolation and coming up with this uh values okay 
so again i'm going to go ahead and check the documentation for interpolate so in search bar you can type in interpolate and look at data frame dot interpolate documentation and you will notice that in a method if you don't specify anything it is by default linear but you can uh, use so many other methods you can use quadratic cubic and piecewise polynomial there are so many uh, methods to specify as far as your interpolation is concerned okay uh, so I'm going to use time now so let's see what time can do for us so here before we do that you will see that using linear inter interpolation it came up with the middle value okay 32 and 28 the middle value is 30 but look at the date okay date is not in the middle okay date is more near towards 5th January okay so I'm missing 2nd and 3rd January so 30 still doesn't look like a better guess it should be relatively near to this value 28 so when you use method equal to time you can see that now it came up with value 29 because now it is uh, considering this time this date also uh, in coming up with this value it is realizing that 4th January is near to 5th hence the value should not be exactly in middle but it should be more near to this value okay so this feature I found uh, to be pretty powerful whenever you are making a uh, guess or estimate for missing values okay so far so good uh, sometimes based on the situation I just want to let's say drop all the rows with any values in that case you can use this method called drop any so you can say df drop any okay and uh, I'm just printing the new data frame so you can see that in my Excel sheet whichever row had any any value okay it dropped all of them so now I got only three rows uh, which has a valid content in all of the columns okay uh, sometimes you want to drop the row if it has at least one any okay so here what it is doing is actually it is doing that so here if you have at least one na it is dropping it but let's say I want to drop only if it has all any so for example I want to drop this row but I still want to uh, preserve these rows because it has at least some data okay so for that you can use how parameter and you can say how is equal to all so now you don't see 9th January here in this data frame because it had all the values to be NA it has this date but this date is a index so it is not considering uh, it is not considering that in in the process of dropping okay uh, and these values these rows has some NA cells but not everything is NA so it's not dropping that okay now what if I want to go by non NA value so let's say I want to say that if I have at least one non NA value then keep that row and drop any other rows so for that you can use a threshold parameter so you can say threshold equal to one threshold equal to one means if I have at least one non NA value then keep the row okay so when you run that see what happens is again the same result 9th January got dropped because it doesn't have any valid value everything was NA okay now let's so it kept the 6th January value because it has at least one valid value so if I change threshold to be 1 what it means is alright so let's run this okay now in th when I say threshold equal to 2 it dropped this particular you can see it drop that particular row because 2 means I need 2 valid values in order to keep the row but I don't have 2 valid values I have only one value the date is not counted because it is index okay so if I have one value I'm going to drop it okay so you can 
use threshold uh, to drive your dropping process by number of valid values that you have okay last thing that we want to cover is how do you go about inserting the missing date so i don't have second and third january here and i want to let's say insert uh, those dates so for that you will do something like this so here you will create a date range and using the date range so let's say i have a date range from 1st january to 11 january so 1st january to 11 january i created a date range so this is your date range and you pass that to date time index and create a date time index and then you do a re-indexing in your data frame so i'm saying df dot re-index using that index and when you print your data frame uh, again so you have to do in place equal to true okay i'm getting some error here because it index got unexpected keyword argument okay so this is unexpected so let's see what's going on here okay so it looks like uh, reindex is not accepting in place as a valid argument so what i have to do is df equal to df dot index and when i execute it you'll see that I got 2nd and 3rd January rows. Now I have NA values, but again, you can use one of the field NA methods to fill them with some uh, estimated values, okay? So that's all we had for this tutorial. Uh, in the next tutorial, uh, we will continue on how to handle missing data using some other techniques, okay? Until then, uh, Thank you very much for watching and if you like this tutorial, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up below. Okay, bye.